In today's video, I'm going to explain why your mini cut has stalled and how to get things moving again. Hey guys, what's going on? This is Paul Ravella from ProPhysique.com. In today's video, we're going to discuss the idea of a mini cut. What is the purpose of a mini cut? What's the best way to handle it? And how do you handle it if you stop losing body fat during a mini cut? So the question that I got came from my Instagram direct message. So first of all, thank you guys for the great questions and go right here on the screen. If you want to send me your direct messages and I'm a coach, I do this for a living. I help people add muscle, lose body fat. I do it myself. I'll show you some video here of me being nice and shredded. I've gone through many cuts, many building phases throughout my life. And if you like this type of information, hit subscribe because I want to help you guys reach your goals. Wanted to ask your opinion on why my mini cut stalled. I've been on maintenance since my last show in November and did a 25 day mini cut for a vacay. First two weeks weight dropped when calories decreased and cardio went up. Then last week weight stuck. I dropped to under 1100 calories and was doing double cardio sessions, sessions but nothing changed. If anything, it started to go up. Inflammation? How can I approach another mini cut with better results? Thank you. So first of all, let's talk about what a mini cut is. The idea of a mini cut is that we're not looking for a lot of fat loss. We're looking for a, a short period, I would say three to four weeks maximum for a mini cut. It might be for a vacation, for a wedding, for an event. Maybe you just want to kind of tighten up your approach again and uh, you know get a body composition that you're a little happier with. But the idea is that because it's shorter, we might be a little bit more aggressive, right? And because it's a little bit more aggressive, we would expect some really good results to start. So you did, you saw some results and then you want to know why you stalled. So the first thing is we'll talk about what actually determines a stall because most of us look at the scale. And if you're just using the scale to determine success, the thing you got to remember is the scale represents water. Most of our body is water, 75, 80%, whatever the statistic is, is water. Okay. So when we are seeing numbers change on the scale, at least in the short term, a lot of times it's water. When we eat carbohydrates, when we take in sodium, when we have sore muscles, our body stores more water. Now, when it's stored in our muscles with carbohydrates, that's actually considered lean body mass. But if you're only looking at the scale to determine success, you might not realize you've actually improved your body composition. So first things first, when you're doing a mini cut, you still need to take pictures front and back in consistent lighting. You still need to take some measurements, okay? Because you wanna have more than one unit of measure. Because what if you get on the scale and it's the same weight as it was last week, but your waist is down an inch. There's no waist muscle, right? So body fat on the waist can really change things. And if you miss that, because you're not taking pictures because a lot of times, especially what I notice when I lose weight, I lose a lot of body fat on my back of my body. And if I were to just look in the mirror every day, I'd be like, wow, I'm not changing. Seeing the back change, and I'll put some pictures here so you can see what I mean. Seeing the back change over time can be quite startling. You can't see that without pictures. So get more than one data point. The first thing you mentioned is probably the most accurate, inflammation. What is inflammation? Inflammation is the body's response to stress. Now, if you are doing a mini cut, it might be considered chronic stress. You might actually not ever be fully recovering, meaning your body is in a constant state of shock. You're basically training, eating low calories, training, eating low calories, training, eating low calories, not getting enough recuperation. Because if you're adding in cardio, you're already doing some training, and what will happen is it'll start to impair your body's ability to recover. And when you have chronic or systemic inflammation, your body holds on to water. That water weight can look funny on the scale. So you might even be leaner, but you look worse because if you dropped out your carbohydrates, your muscles are flatter, smaller, but your inflammation is making your body hold more water. So inflammation is the first one. So how do you fix it if inflammation is the issue? Well, we'll talk a little bit about that, but the first thing I like to talk about is what I use with my clients. I use a product called Core Hard. Why Core Hard? Well, first of all, I am sponsored by Core Nutritionals. However, the reason I'm sponsored by Core Nutritionals is because I believe in their products. I use them, my wife uses them, and I have my clients use them. They have a product called Core Hard, which contains KSM 66, and I know what you're thinking. Hey, Paul, I take ashwagandha. Well, the problem with ashwagandha is it's not as tightly regulated as KM66, okay? You know exactly what you're getting in the proper dosages. So if you haven't tried a product like this, it can really help 
with the body's response to stress. The research on it is very clear. It lowers our cortisol levels. So if you're having trouble keeping up and not recovering, and this is something I use for my athletes in prep, or, you or you're a type A high anxiety person, Core Hard can be a wonderful addition to your approach. Another reason why mini cuts may not work is because you end up trading cardio or activity in the gym for non-exercise activity. What do I mean by that? Well, you know that later today you're gonna go do a cardio session at the gym and you're thinking about walking your dog, but you're thinking about walking your dog and it doesn't sound so good because you know you're gonna be saving your energy for that. That's what I like to call a swap of activity. Just because you increase your cardio doesn't mean you increase your caloric deficit because if you decrease any other activity that you would do throughout the day through conserving of energy, well, you just traded it. You essentially traded something that you would enjoy doing for something you probably don't enjoy doing. So it's very important that we pay attention to our NEAT, our non-exercise activity thermogenesis. Now we all have fitness trackers these days. They're even built into our phone. So you can actually start to just look at your daily movement and realize that, oh, some days I'm actually moving a little bit less. It's not just about cardio, guys. It's about how much we move. And when we start to get low calorie, we start to conserve energy. Our hand movements might be less. We might dance in the car a little bit less. We might take less trips off the couch. We might start looking for ways to conserve energy. Our bodies are very good at energy conservation. So just because you cut your calories and up your cardio doesn't mean you increase your deficit if you just traded that for less movement throughout the day. Another one I like to talk about is digestion because digestion, when we reduce calories and increase our activity, slows down. Our body becomes better at absorbing calories from our food. But that's not the digestion I'm concerned with. What I'm concerned with is when we make these swaps for low calorie diets, what do we typically do? We look for high volume foods. Some of the high volume foods we use like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, while being wonderful in small doses, can actually really gum up our digestive systems. And it can actually cause a fermentation of those things. And you'll start to get gassy and bloated by the end of the day. This gas and bloat can make absorption of your food a little bit tougher. And it can actually start to cause a little bit of backing up. So you'll have less frequent bowel movements. You'll have more gas and bloating. And what does that mean? It means more water in the digestive system. And what is represented on the scale? You guessed it, water. So again, you could be leaner, but because your digestion is kind of messed up and your inflammation is up, your fluid retention is up, the scale just looks a little off. The final one I wanna talk about is the thing that I pay attention to the most with my clients when they start to get really lean, close to stage weight. It happens to me, it happens to them, it's gonna to happen to you. When you're low body fat, your sleep will decrease. Now there's a lot of theories on why this might be, but basically I think of it like this. Our body has an alarm system that says, we're not getting enough food and our body fat's really low. To survive, we need to be awake more to go get more food. So we're awake more. Our sleep cycles get shorter. If you are sleeping less, your metabolic rate slows. If your metabolic rate slows, you're burning through less calories throughout the day. So a lot of times people say, I know I'm in a caloric deficit, but I'm not losing weight. A caloric deficit is a very dynamic term. Your body fluctuates all the time. So how do we fix this if you're not getting good sleep? Well, you can take a sleep aid, that's not really what I'm gonna suggest. You also might wanna watch what time you're having caffeine. You might wanna have a really good kind of bedtime routine, get to bed at the same time. And when I find that my sleep cycles get shorter, sometimes I'll try to squeeze in a nap each day. Okay, so if I'm only sleeping five to six hours at night, I might try to find time to get an hour nap. Just depends on what your lifestyle is like. But how do we solve this problem realistically? How do we solve all these problems? What I'm gonna to explain to you is likely gonna solve all these problems, and that is refeed and recovery. What is a refeed? Refeed is when we bring up carbohydrates intentionally, but we still pay attention to our overall calories. If you said you were down to 1100 calories, I might just bring your calories up to 1300, 1400 calories for two consecutive days, but make the bulk of that through carbohydrates, low fat carbohydrates that actually kind of reinvigorate the digestive system, reinvigorate the muscles and help you sleep better. You'll get deeper sleep. What else is it gonna do? It's gonna reinvigorate your training. I would also have you do less cardio, dropping that inflammation. So if you refeed and refresh, you're going to get multiple benefits from it. You're gonna feel better and then you can push forward. All right, hopefully guys, this helps if you're having a mini cut and you're kind of stuck and I'll talk to you guys tomorrow.